I'm recording this video off stream because your boy doesn't have a video prepared for today, which is Wednesday. And I say today because it's like one in the morning or something like that. Anyways, the video that we're reacting to is called Summon 1G Quit Fortnite and Everything Changed. I really love this video and the story of Summon 1G because what he went through is a prime example of something that a lot of Twitch streamers and a lot of content creators go through when they start sticking to just one source of, of content and when they feel like changing things up, it just feels like a major setback and it just feels like they, they're they they're stuck. And it's something that I felt as well. If you guys were around three months ago, I uploaded a video where I talked about how streaming Minecraft ruined my YouTube channel. And it's still something that, you know, I still believe today that Minecraft did indeed ruin my YouTube channel. But anyways, let's get on with the video. I have no intro. I'm sorry. So, have this. <laughs> now, if you're clicking this video, then you're probably familiar with Summit 1G, the popular streamer who originally got big on Switch by playing CSGO and even had a short-lived competitive career. He's been a fan favorite for a while and had some especially good years in 2016-2017 when Battle Royale games like PUBG and H1Z1 were starting to really blow up. Now, this was all well and good for Summit because he seemed to really enjoy playing these games, and since they were so popular, it only served to help his viewers. But here's the thing, what happens when a new game takes over and a big streamer like Summit is not really into it? If you haven't already guessed, I'm obviously talking about Fortnite. Fucking Fortnite, dude, I swear to god. Early stages of Fortnite was really awesome and it was really nostalgic because at the time nobody really knew how to build battle. Nobody was obviously sweating, people were getting into the game and just having fun and that was something that was really awesome was being able to come home and get on this game with friends and just being able to have fun but of course the minute people started to sweat and then as soon as the little kids started building five star hotels and shit after getting touched by a fly you know it, it really became something that i just i, I just couldn't couldn't handle anymore. In other words, it was really great when people didn't know about the game. The game dominated 2018, and whether they were for it or not, most big streamers felt compelled to play it. The biggest meta was playing fucking Fortnite because everybody was talking about this game. And you need to understand, everybody was making all kinds of content off of Fortnite, including naughty content, which I obviously won't talk about. <laughs> but yeah, it was the meta. It was definitely the fucking meta. Now, at the time Summit was playing the game and his stream was doing great, but there was a problem. As the weeks went on and he had to keep playing the game, he got sick of it fast. There's gotta be a different fucking way for me to make it in the Twitch world than go down this fucking Fortnite line, man! And this led to a lot of problems for him, because it turned streaming into a chore. Now, the logical average person would think, Whatever, bro, just play a different game. Yep. If you don't like it, I mean, you get to play video games for money, so stop complaining. Here's the problem, whenever Summit would stream a game, Game that wasn't part of the battle royale craze, he would get a fraction of the viewers that he usually got. That might not seem like a big deal, but it can really take a toll on you when your career and livelihood suddenly appear to be sinking, and sinking fast. That's what I was feeling when I was streaming on YouTube. I had about 390 subscribers on YouTube with about 25 people watching me per stream play minecraft but the minute that i wanted to change to a different game it just turned into people getting absolutely upset and me ending up with only like maybe three four people watching me you gotta understand like when you see that number go down you begin to feel like oh shit i'm fucking up i need to go back to playing this game instead when that's not the case. It's not that you're fucking up. It's just that these people don't want to see another game. They're there for Fortnite content. And ultimately, it is your decision whether you want to continue to provide that content or not. You know, that's basically how it is. But then it starts to feel like you're stuck because if you don't produce this shit, you don't get the numbers, you don't get the viewership, and that really starts to take a toll on you. It feels like you're taking a step back, a huge step back. For Summit, the anxiety of always having to choose between streaming content that made him unhappy or streaming content that made him a failure started to build up. And eventually it got to him and his mental health deteriorated. After some time off, he returned to streaming, but this time it was with a new priority in mind. He forewent his ego and the revenue that he could be making 
and instead decided to focus on his mental health, do what makes him happy. So he started playing games that he wanted to play, not caring about how unpopular they might be. But here's where things get interesting. In late November, following the release of a new expansion, he started regularly playing the game Sea of Thieves. At first, his viewership didn't really change all that much, but something happened and it was obvious to anybody that was tuning into his streams. He was having a fucking blast playing this game. It didn't matter that he wasn't getting the same level of viewership that he did just half a year earlier. He was having so much fun playing the game that it made his stream a joy to watch. I wanna play a game. Three. Three. Now, and just in changing that, right? The man is having a fucking blast, and it's not a battle royale game. You see shit like that, that is very much joyful. Something that even I would try to come back to continue to watch. Within a month of him playing Sea of Thieves, his viewership more than doubled. While his peers were continuing to play the same battle royale games to diminishing returns, he was having a great time with Sea of Thieves and growing his channel rapidly as he did it. But this time he did it his own way and his success with the game has even inspired other big streamers to give it a shot. And to see him for almost an hour or two hours laying down behind a chair inside of a pirate ship Yeah, he knocked it out of the park. It's the reason why I have streams and I have videos where it's not all just one sort of content. And it's the main reason why I make it very clear that I'm a variety streamer. And I don't say that because I just want to say it. I say it because I genuinely have this approach now where I stream whatever the fuck it is I want to stream. And if people don't enjoy it, then people don't enjoy it and that's okay. As a streamer, I have every right to stream whatever I want to stream. As a content creator, I have the right to create whatever it is that I want to create. As a viewer, you have the right to watch whatever it is that you want to watch. So if you want to go and watch somebody play Fortnite, then go watch them play Fortnite. I know there's other people that play Fortnite, right? But don't expect one person that you absolutely love to continue to play the game that you want to see them play just because you want to see that, right? That's not going to happen. If they get sick and tired of it, then they get sick and tired of it. They have every single right to feel that way. I think that there's a really big lesson here in how we choose to live our lives. It can sometimes feel like the only way to succeed is to do what's safe rely on decisions that we know will benefit us even if they make us unhappy. Whether that be the career that you choose, the type of content you make, a lifestyle that you live, or if you decide you want to go to school. No matter what the benefit is, if you aren't at least trying to do what makes you happy, then it's only a matter of time before it starts to wear you down. We only get to live one life, and time is precious, so if you can only choose one thing to do with it, choose something that makes you happy. I've been asked on TikTok because I have a lot of subscribers on there, you know, what kind of content should this person make? And I tell them the exact same thing over and over again. Do whatever makes you happy. Because if I tell you to make comedic jokes, maybe you don't have the material to make those comedic jokes or maybe you don't feel okay with making comedic jokes. At the end of the day, you want to do something that makes you the happiest, right? If you want to go and do TikTok dances, then go do TikTok dances. If you want to go and make comedy skits, which is something that I like to do, then go ahead and do that stuff. If you want to keep it variety, then keep it variety, which is also something that I do as well. I, I talk about anything that I want to talk about on my TikToks, no fucks given. Anybody who uh, wants to create content, anybody who wants to start streaming, do what makes you happy. Do what makes you fucking happy. Okay, but I gotta stay.